I want to let you know about some new shows that are coming out right now. Toronto, we've just added a late show on February 21st. Uh, February 15th, the Gold Country Casino in Oroville, California. Those tickets are on sale now. Still available January 14th in Oslo, Norway. Uh, Las Vegas, January 31st and February 1st. I will be at the Mirage Hotel and Casino. Those tickets are a little higher priced than usual. It's because it's a specialty weekend. And that was the, that was the agreement that the uh, theater would do with me. So if it's too high priced for you, that's understandable. I'll be back in the future at a more decent rate. And also, I want to let you know, February 28th in Oxon Hill, Maryland, at the MGM National Harbor. Today's guest is, uh, is a working man. He is, uh, this is one of my favorite episodes, and we're so glad that he was here. Um, he is a plumber and a regular man. Ladies and gentlemen, the toilet champion is here. Plumber Brad Laskowski. We're here with Brad Laskowski, and that's Polish, huh? Oh, yeah. Polish power, dude. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us today, man. Oh, thanks for having we, me. We, we uh, yeah, just happy to talk to a plumber, man, because I don't know anything really about plumbing. Oh, yeah, ask away. You know? Um, all right, I'll think about this. So what is the difference between plumbing and septic tank? I was thinking about that. All right. Like, sometimes you hear, like, uh, you know, you hear people have septic tanks. I would hear a lot of times growing up, people had septic tanks, you know, or somebody got like, sure, you know, um, something happened to them by a septic tank. That's how I actually got my start was uh, dealing with septic tanks. I started uh, 20 something years ago with Roto Rooter. I'm sure you heard of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and that's a commercial outfit, isn't it? Uh, largest plumbing company in the world. Is it really? Yep. Wow. Uh, so yeah, the, the very first day I, I get hired, uh, mm -hmm. I, I gotten out of the army. I was 20 years old. I get hired with this, uh, by Roto, huh? By, Roto. by Roto Rooter man mm -hmm. in, uh, Alabama. And now were they in, and were they, uh, enlisting people? I mean, was no. there like a program from the army to Roto Rooter? No, no, there... no, 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 okay. uh, I don't know. I got out of the army and I went to work at Lowe's, the, the home improvement store. Oh yeah. I love that place. Uh, I, I was actually, when I got out of the army, I was, I was 20 and I had applied to Atlanta SWAT. And I was going through all the SWAT qualifications and everything else because I was, I was kind of heavy duty in the military, you know. So I didn't really have a whole lot of skills when I got out. How'd you so get out of 20? I, I joined when I was 17. Damn. So I graduated early, you know, a little smart, you know. Yeah. Fig figured some stuff out. And, and hard working you must have been, huh? Very. St still am. Yeah. Uh, most people would call me the hardest worker they ever met. Dang. So I, I kind of take that as a, a point of pride, you know. I could see that, dude. You're like the Joe Rogan of plumbing, dude. Because <laughs> Joe Rogan, is, I think, is the hardest worker that I know. <laughs> That guy is busy. Dude, I think there's nine Joe Rogans. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be more than one because he's in too many places at once. I, sometimes I have a, I have like kind of a daydream where he's going to bring me in a room and be like, hey, hey, I want you to meet these other Joe Rogans. <laughs> like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, man. Um, okay, so you get out of the military. So, and that's yeah, a, yeah. Dude, that's a note for young fellas. If you're like, I don't know if I should go into the military if I... 17 out by 20 yeah yeah wow i can i use my va benefits uh, you know i everything's cool everything's like normal yeah i just i joined early i got out or i signed up for three i got out okay so they, they offered to re-enlist me but i i had just met this girl mm -hmm. she was just pregnant you know it was young and did and, you get you know, her pregnant or she was no nah, no nah, she, she was, was pregnant. pregnant when you met her yeah wow that's a f brave deal i stuck on with that crap for seven years too with, with her and her kid well, we eventually had one too. Her and okay. I, like a few years later, her and I. My, okay, so my you got married. Kid. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then divorced. Twenty seven left. Anyway, the the point of the septic thing was, um, dude that hires me is old, big old fat dude from Alabama. You know, mm -hmm. southern as as all can be. Yeah, I'll take you out on your first day. You'll see it's not that bad. Okay, and we go out and dig up a septic tank, mm -hmm. which is plumbing. And people hide them or what? They're always buried. Oh, wow. So, so, so the pipe that leaves your house goes underground and it goes out to a box in the yard. Mm -hmm. And that, it basically naturally decomposes everything that's in there. Okay, so it's compost almost kind of in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's a big, it's, it's five feet deep. 
It's it's a big box. You could bury a lot of bodies in there. You could. <laughs> you could. And it's so it's five feet deep and it's buried in the ground. Yeah, usually a foot deep, maybe more. Okay. And 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 it's five. How is it square? It's a. Uh, it's about like this table. You know, it's a big long rectangle, maybe a little oh, yeah, wider yeah, yeah. or so, Actually, and I've about five them. feet deep or so. I saw a dude weld one in half one time, and I remember some of us. They're usually use concrete. It. Uh, well, then this got kind of, I guess, welded it with like a um. Maybe a concrete sure, torch he, or something. He, well, he might have used a. He might have had a steel box because yeah. I mean, you. I've seen some rustic septic tanks made out of fifty-five gallon drums with holes punk, punched in the sides. Okay, so you've seen so, some real rural ones. I've seen. You've seen them. I, I've seen. <laughs> you've seen fucking the Noah's Ark of fucking in ground shitters. You, yeah. you better believe it. In Alabama, they'll do whatever it takes. Oh yeah. I dude. went to one house in Alabama. They didn't even have a septic tank. Mm -hmm. The pipe went down. It went out about a hundred yards. And that was it. Oh, wow. It just left out on the ground. Wow. Yeah, Ro yeah. Roots were all growing up into the end of the pipe and everything. So mm -hmm. I had to go there and cut them all off and open it out and snake the pipe out and get everything good to go and everything. So, But that's no septic tank. Yeah. Just a long pipe. Just freelance old school. Uh, it's illegal. You it is? Yeah, 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 you can't <laughs> do that. No, no, black water needs to be contained. Okay, so, so that's really the rule. Yeah. Black water has to be contained. Brown water or gray water, like kitchen sink water mm -hmm. and uh, uh, washing machines, dishwasher, stuff like that. You can actually, uh, and I do, uh, install a 55-gallon drum with a pump in it and separate those lines from a septic tank. Okay. So all that washing machine water that's bad for a septic tank mm -hmm. now goes into a 55-gallon drum with a pump in it mm -hmm. and then you can water your yard with that okay so that's so washing legit. machine water that gray water yeah you can take that into a drum yeah if you wanted to yeah. and then reuse that it's actually good because it's got soap in it and soap and the phosphates are good for your grass oh wow yeah go figure so that's so but the dark water the black water black water has to be by law it has to be contained contained yeah and you, then what do you do after you contain it? Well, in a septic tank system, after a couple of years, all that stuff breaks down and separates. The solids will sink to the bottom and turn to a sludge. Mm -hmm. The things that are not biodegradable. Will like float. a wedding ring or something? Like if a dog eats no, a wedding that, ring? That, anything that would sink will go to the bottom, obviously. Okay. But okay. anything that's uh, grease mm -hmm. uh, won't biodegrade. It, oh, it'll yeah. collect and it'll turn into a ball, basically a hard kind of crust on the top of the septic tank water. Or uh, condoms mm -hmm. won't biodegrade. They'll float. Oh, wow. Uh, man, one time I popped a septic tank open mm -hmm. and I saw about 10,000 condoms in there. I swear. I mean, oh. I didn't count them or anything, but they were all over the top of the tank. And who was the guy? A little Asian guy. No, no, no. It was the, the homeowner. Him, he, he, he was standing there watching me oh, dig damn. this tank up, right? Crazy. So I, did he have kids or something? Like, was he no shot? Kids? No. Oh, yeah. Because they weren't his condoms. No way. I could have guessed it was a homeowner. Yeah, <laughs> he was standing there watching me. I popped it. Yeah. Well, he called me because the, his, his toilet wouldn't flush no more, right? And I get there and I snake the drain out and, and it won't go down. I'm like, well, I got to dig up your tank. So I dig up the tank and when I open up the tank and you look down and they're just everywhere. They're coating the wall, the pink no. ones and green ones and blue. Oh. Yeah. I mean, every color of the Jesus, rainbow. Jesus, Easter colors, huh? Yeah. Dude worked at a tire manufacturing plant, uh, the graveyard shift mm -hmm. oh. for like 20 years. And I'm betting every night. No, way. she she had somebody coming. They got a divorce. After so that. you really so that's man, that's crazy. Right. So sometimes opening up that septic tank, it's almost like a time capsule for your butt, or almost, or so, hey. or for your, you know, for below the waist. It's almost like a time capsule for what you or anything you've been doing in your home. Yep. Really, yep, yep. I mean, uh, that that actually happened twice. That uh, that instance caused a divorce. The next uh, time that it happened where I found condoms in the tank, it was a young girl. She was like 14 or 15, oh. and it was her grandma's house. Oh. And the grandma was standing there watching me. And whose were they, you think? They, they were the granddaughters, for sure. Oh. I mean, they were, it was just a, those are the only two ladies living in the house. It's the 14-year-old oh, girl and the grandma. So awkward. And the grandma was like, they ain't mine. <laughs> hey, dude. That's going to be an awkward game of go fish that they play later in the right? day, you know? Where'd you get all these? Yeah. <laughs> Why are they in here? Uh, so that's why you started in Alabama. Yeah. You worked with a man. Do you remember the gentleman? The, the guy who hired me? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We still talk. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, he's a good man. He is? And yeah, so yeah. now when you, what was like your vibe when you started working there? Were you like, it? Were you like, oh, this is a career that I want to make? Or were you like, this is just a job that I want to do? What was kind of your, your uh, goal if you had any going into it? You know, the money. I didn't really have a goal going into it. The money just sticks you. Plumbing pays well. Yeah. And it always has. So. And they say, I've heard, this is a, a saying in the universe, that um, plumbers make more than lawyers. I believe that. You do? Yeah. And how does that break down? Because why? 
um, lawyers ain't working 40 hours a week. Right. You know what I mean? They get paid a lot for what they do, but they, they don't do it all the time. Right. So that's great that they get $400 an hour, three hours a week. Right. You know, I, I work 50, 60 hours a week every week. Right. And, and, you know, I'm only charging a hundred, maybe more or whatever, but. But you add it up over time. Add it up. That's the way they do it. Yeah. Cause you always hear that. You always hear that lawyer, uh, that plumbers make more than lawyers. That's just like a thing I've always heard. Or doctors. Though I heard it as doctors, but it, I mean, same thing. I, I went to a, a university professor's house years ago and, and I handed him the bill at the end and he just flipped out. Like he was just couldn't believe it cost that much. You charge more than doctors do. Do you realize it took me 10 years to learn how to do this? Right. You know, it, it literally is a 10-year program. You have, it, it's, it's as hard, I think, of course, because I went down that road, as any eight-year uh, doctorate or master's degree that you're going to get. You to know? become, I get, yeah, I mean, anything you're gaining knowledge. Yeah. To That's become a well-rounded plumber anyway. Yeah. You know? uh, and so, so you start this job, you got the guy with Rotor Rooter. Yeah. And so you worked there for how long? Uh, with that guy for five years, a uh, little over five years, dude gave me a thousand dollar bonus for every year I worked for him. Did he really? So Damn. second year was two grand, third year's three, fifth year was five. That was Nick's nice. use this later in his Christmas <laughs> bonus discussion too. I can already tell. <laughs> Fuck man, yeah. I was hoping to fucking <laughs> bro. That's God working right there because well, it's mean, been on my mind, and then you bring it up, and he's in here. In the room. Dude, dude needs a little bit of help. Every no, once look, in a while, man, right? This is he's the hardest area. worker. He's the hardest worker I know. He is works he? very hard, and right. he, he really is, man. Well, hook him he, up. And he's very good. I, that, yeah, I agree with you. I, hey, I think I we saw, try. We do our best. I, I saw on one of your other shows you were talking about if it came down to killing him or killing you, mm -hmm. you might not even kill him. Yeah. That's a pretty big step. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I forgot I said that, but I still agree with myself. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, and also with plumbing, you if it's like if it's a holiday, then those prices are higher, right? You have to do it, don't you? When I was working for the commercial companies, yeah, they, I see they did. Now that I I I, I actually quit doing the, the working for commercial companies mostly because I I was tired of hearing the complaints from the customers about how much it cost. Oh, really? You know, I, I'm going and doing the work, and I'm getting paid from the company right but not very much okay not not as obviously not as much as now yeah uh but i, I mean you got to understand any large company they got overhead they got you know insurances that that, that are humongous yeah Ad, you just advertising costs just for having a place dude my l and i just for myself is almost 20 grand a month wow. or a year a year and if i had to add on like an apprentice or something I'm, it doubles i i it's wild, isn't it? That's why I do everything by myself. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Yeah, it's like you got to get, um, yeah, I just realized we have to get a policy in case anything like an errors and omissions policy we have to get for podcasting now. Uh, you have to get workman's comp. Yep, workman's um, comp. And EPL and I or some some yep. similar type of policy that I just that they just sent me something for the other day. It's like I, I don't even know if I can afford it. So it's like, um, but it's interesting. Yeah, once you start to, uh, if you want to build something bigger, yeah. or add more, yeah. more there's more costs and liabilities that are incurred. And they say, uh, you know, California is the hardest place. To, to run a, either a small business or to get, get a startup going. Yeah. They, there's so many restrictions and so many fees and, and, and regulations that govern. It's crazy. It's, it's almost amazing. too much. It's like, what's even going on here? And when I was in Hawaii, I was rolling in money. Yeah. Just so, didn't so, have to worry about nothing. <laughs> now, how do, you, um, how do you plumb in Hawaii? Because slower. <laughs> Everything's slower. Well, it seems like you have like all the water pushing on the island. It's going to push everything back up the toilet. Nah, you know? nah, 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 nah. They, I mean, they, their infrastructure is, you know, significantly improved from way back those days. You know, everything's built up. Everything's feet off the ground and all that. Um, they have sanitary sewer systems, which is, uh, which is the name for, you, you call it sanitary sewer. I don't know why, because it's not fucking sanitary at all. It isn't? <laughs> there's turds floating down mm -hmm. this pipe that leaves this building mm -hmm. is called the sanitary sewer line okay it's full of turds it's okay. not sanitary in any way i have and no idea are they they don't know i mean I they're everybody's know. everybody okay. in the building you know oh, what I'm everybody saying? in the building the, the okay. whole i'm like fuck i just thought we were like the on a damn fucking no, no, no. On the, the exit of this building has line. one great big pipe that leaves it 
from all the smaller pipes that come from each toilet. Okay. They all join together and make one big pipe. That pipe goes out to the street, which is a bigger pipe, probably 12, 14, 24 inches. Who knows? A city like this is probably big. Okay. And all the turds are floating down that. Okay. It's a constant stream. It looks like a river. If you were to open up a manhole in the street and look down there, it's a constant stream. And that's a black water? Yeah, that's black water. Okay. Contained. That's contained. But they call it sanitary. And in my whole life at plumbing, 25 years or whatever, it's always been called sanitary sewer. Yeah. Why? I think probably to give people a safe idea, just like, oh, I suppose. in case they see the pipe, they're like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, we're doing our best. It's sanitary. <laughs> it's down there, yeah. yeah. It's out of the way. It's sanitary. It's hidden. So all that goes to a sewer treatment facility where they process and treat it and then release the clean water into a stream and out to the ocean. Okay. And is it really clean when it gets out there? You could be honest. It passes EPA standards. Right. We'll leave it at that. You know, I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't drink any of the water near it. What if you made an ice tray cube of trays, uh, like ice of it? Would you put one cube like in a soda or something? Fuck no. <laughs> Come on, bro. No. no. Come on, dude. No. <laughs> right. No. Bro, you got to fucking, you got to get a little more polis than that, man. I have been around enough turds in my life, man. Have you? Oh, after like 11 years of that, I had to give up on the Roto-Rooter thing. And, and the, and the Roto-Rooter deals mostly with, with feces. Now, what is the, uh, let me ask you, what's the term that's comfortable to use? Like, Because every time if a plumber comes over, I don't know if I say shit, do I say uh, poop, do I say turds, do I? Whatever you like, man. Okay. Whatever you like. You know, they, they all work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had this guy in Alabama one time. I I. I knock on the door and everything, you know, Rooter Rooter man, I'm here. And uh, he opens the door and he goes, thank God you're here, man. I've been fighting these turds all morning. <laughs> oh, <damn>. <laughs> <laughs> and I go in there and he's got just water sprayed up all oh. over the walls. He's been plunging the shit out of this toilet for like an hour and no, making no headway. Oh, I said, give me that. And I take the dude's plunger and he goes, that ain't going to work. You're going to need some way more than that. And I put it in there and hit it like two, three times. Pop, pop, pop. it goes away. How the fuck do you do that? Damn. Man, I'm, I, I do this for a <laughs> living. This is what I do. <laughs> you know? Do some people, um, like, if you, is it uncomfortable? I feel like it's uncomfortable if you go into a place. Does the guy, does do you, like, does somebody be like, okay, I pooped in here? Does people just kind of uh, vague about it? Hey, somebody shit in here? Sometimes. What do people say? Sometimes people are super embarrassed and they're like, I'm yeah. really sorry about it. it that's, that's how I would be. Yeah, I would too. I, Hey, if it were me, I'd get the turd out. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't know what to do. I'm, if it's, right, put it on a paper or something, run it yeah, outside get it or something. Out there, yeah. Fish scoop it up yeah, or whatever you got to do. Yeah, do what you can, But man. The, I mean, I've Throw seen some rose petals in there or something, you know. So I, I, I can't call this lady out. She's probably dead by now anyway. But I used to have this one customer. It was the sweetest, nicest lady. I went to her house probably three years, you know, constantly. I was going to her house like every month. Once a month, I'd go to her house wow. and unstop both of her toilets mm. because I, I know this is a little graphic, but she would shit baseballs. Oh, wow. Really? Just round balls of shit. It, it, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what was going on with her intestines. We used to talk about it. The Roto-Rooter guys, you yeah. would be like, what's up with this lady? How does this happen? She's got the Walker Bueller colon right there, man. I'm going, she's got something wow. going on. Out they go. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Joe Musgrove, man. I, I, I'm wondering... <laughs> If she's shitting baseballs, how fast do they come out? You know, could we clock oh, these things? Yeah. That's, oh, and it must be so intense. Is it too. like a curveball, a slider? <laughs> it's probably a slider. It's probably, yeah. <laughs> it's, probably a, it's probably a slider, man. Damn. So anyway, they would clog the toilet. And so, and you get in there and what? So you, if you can't hit it with a plunger, which these turds were solid, man, they were they were well built turds. And do you think she's eating something unique? Or she something? is. She whatever her diet is is creating this grass, like, maybe like paste turds. Yeah, oh, I you see. Know, you, you could. So we had a, a snake for the toilet, right? Yeah. That you stick in the toilet to unstop it. It'll grab things too. This snake would like go through the turd and just put a little hole in it. Mm-hmm. And then once you pull the snake out, it's like the turd would close back up like Jello. Damn. The turd would just close back like, up like Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, like the like the liquid Terminator, you yeah. know. 
So you'd, you'd basically just have to run that snake back and forth and back and forth until you could break up enough of that turd to get the water helping it out to, to flush more. this thing all the way through. And how far does that rotor rooter thing go? That one would only go through the toilet, like four or five feet. Oh, wow. Just, just right to the, yeah, because the toilet will go down and then up and then down again. And that's about three feet by the time it finishes. Okay. And that's really all you need. Right. Because if it's any farther than that, you need to pull the toilet off the floor and go after the pipe. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, yeah, you, you once you do, after that three feet, you're going yeah. into... Into the pipe. Into, into the, the sewer pipe. system. That, it's a different ball game. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little more expensive after that, usually. Okay. So... Um, and why does the pipe on the toilet go up and down like that after? That, it would that, seem like a straight pipe would help out better. It's a trap. It has to go down and up like that, so water always stays in that portion right there. Otherwise, you're going to smell shit coming out of the out of the pipe all the time. That that water there prevents the smell from coming back. Ah, so that's why it has that that kind of snake, that S curve, P trap, the P trap. Yeah, same thing underneath your sink. You see that little U bend underneath there, right? The U bend, and that's so the same it thing. stinks, but it's up in, it's stuck in the top part of that pipe. Well, anything downstream of mm -hmm. that where that water is mm -hmm. smells really bad. I see. That water is what blocks the gas, sewer gas, from coming, coming back through. at you. Oh, wow. You ever, you ever go into a building and it just kind of smells like shit? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like the whole place smells like sewer and you can't figure it out? Usually what that is is a dry floor drain somewhere. Because floor drains, even in the bathrooms, they have that same pee trap in the bottom of them. But if nobody pours water in them, that'll evaporate. Here's a free tip for like everybody out there. <laughs> that'll evaporate mm -hmm. and then you'll get that sewer gas smell oh, coming in. Oh, because it's coming in because there's no water there to block it from Correct. coming up. Correct. So a lot of times you just, uh, uh, I mean, so many times I'd walk into a building and I know that smell well. Mm -hmm. be like, we got this smell. We don't know. Oh yeah, I know it. And then I just search around and find the dry floor drain, pour some water in there and Give me my money. Yeah, dang, I'm out. <laughs> right? So a lot of this, probably over the years, you learn these different ways of like, oh, okay, instead of you know going through every pipe in the building the first time to, to the thousandth time you come in, it's the smell, you find the dry drain, sure. boom, and I'm done. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, after 20 years of experience, pays tons. Pays, it, yeah. it really does pay And it dividends. should. Yeah, well, yeah. And it should because you put in the time. So is there certain points where – uh like, do you feel, uh, oh, I, I interrupted you about the story with that lady. Or was that it? She just had some wild, just She just unique. had wild turds, man, and we used to talk about it. We, we would never, you know, shame her, or embarrass yeah. her, just go there and take care of it. We're sorry to, you know, give us a call when you need us. We gave her a super discounted rate because she called us all the time. Right. Eventually. And she used to give, the, the first lady that I married, the, the kid, the, the, the daughter that she had that wasn't mine. Right. Was, um. She used to give that girl presents, uh, oh, little nice. dolls and stuff. So she's almost like, you know, family, a little, yeah, a little community. You know, yeah. hey, here's for your daughter. You know, yeah. So after like three years of, of feeling guilty on stopping this lady's toilet every month, look on my day off, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna install you two pressure assisted power toilets for free. Dang, you pay for the toilets, I'll give you the labor for free. I went over there on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I jerked her old toilets out that were, you know, obviously not up to the challenge she was putting on them, mm -hmm. and uh, and and put in these. You seen those that body works? Those, those jet toilets where you flush them, they just sound like the a jet Japanese engine toilets, going off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I put two of those in. She never called us again. Wow, fixed, good to go. I mean, she did call us like a year later because her kitchen sink was stopped up or something like that, but. How many thousands of dollars did that just save over yeah. the lifetime of, of all that? Yeah, you got to do that every once in a while. I yeah, think. every yeah, yeah, you help out, man. You help out where you can, especially if you notice those patterns. And, yeah, you know, you're like at some point it does get to be like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm keep giving this person. This person keeps giving me business, but at a certain point, I can just be helpful or yeah. something. And you almost feel like you're robbing them after yeah, a while. At a certain point. You know? Yeah, I like having that thing inside of you that feels like that because then it tells you when to like be one way and when to be another way. And know? that's why I do it by myself now. I, yeah. I can't do it for a company. They charge too much. And so you did rotor rooter for how long? 11 years. And that was in Alabama? No, no, no. I five years in Alabama and six years in Tacoma and Seattle. Oh, wow. Yeah, so when I got divorced in Alabama, I moved uh, to, to Washington, which is where I was born. And that's higher altitude. And people are... Do no, people no, sea level. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah, I was right on the water, right, right in Seattle. It was sea level. Huh. Yeah. But I just feel like overall, Nick, we just looked that up, mm -hmm. and I'm not challenging. I'm just curious myself. Is is Seattle what the uh, difference in land elevation is? For some reason, I always think of the South as being like a lower. I, I, 
I'm not sure what it was in Alabama, but when I was in Alabama, I, I want to say they were a couple hundred feet up where Seattle is. I mean, there's water right there, right in front of you. Right. That water is sea level because it's the Puget Sound. Oh, yeah. That's the dang sea. Yeah. You're right. So b- base elevation in Alabama, probably a couple hundred feet, maybe. Oh, Dude, 500 feet above sea level. There you go. I mean, elevation is like 500 feet above sea level. Highest point in Seattle is 520 feet. Yeah, you got some hills for sure, but the lowest point, which is sea level. Yeah. Wow. Gang, bro. Average elevation is 170. All right. So anyway. So yeah, that's a lot closer. Everywhere you're driving around the, the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, and all the surrounding areas, a lot of the area, you're looking at water. Right. You know, at the, at the sound out there. So I, not elevation so much, but cold, rainy, wet gray and how does that affect plumbing like is there different type of plumbing going on that's what i want to know is there different plumbing going on in the pacific northwest that we don't know about or something as opposed to what's going on like in alabama in alabama the rules so when i was in alabama they ran off the national plumbing code which is a book about mm, three quarters of an inch thick or so got a lot of pages in it maybe 100 pages or so uh national plumbing code pretty simple do what you want as long as it works basically and don't leak right uh I moved to Washington and they, as, as California does now too, but back then they didn't, uh, uniform plumbing code, which is the, the gold standard. And that book is like this thick and Damn. it's got addend- uh, addendums and additions and revisions. It's like the shit constitution or something. <laughs> My God, it's unreal. It's crazy. It's, it's everything out West. Once you get out here, there's so much paperwork yeah. and this and that, yeah. and you gotta, and nobody, if somebody doesn't want to work at all, you got a fee, you got to fucking buy you them a pay hat. To, taxes yeah, or more, book. all that. Hey, the farther West you go, the harder it is on the working man. Yeah. It really is. So they say Washington's the hardest state to get a license in for, for plumbers. Michigan's the second hardest. Really? Yeah. You'd think people would be doing a lot of shitting in Michigan and they would need more help. That's what Because all their shit freezes. Oh, really? You know? I mean, they, they have... Oh, cut- I didn't even think <clears throat> about that, dude. Imagine now it's frozen. Frozen shit. You got a whole different battle, bro. <laughs> That's insane. You can't run a sewer cable through frozen shit. Fuck, what do you do, dude? Um... Restrictions are different in cold weather climates. I, 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 uh, I, I've never been to Michigan, but I'm going to guess that they're going to be somewhere similar as to like Colorado. And I, I did do Colorado plumbing. Wow. And all their shit's buried eight feet deep in Colorado. Oh, all of their septic tanks and everything? Everything's buried eight feet all deep. All the plumbing. Water is, lines, everything That's goes, the rule. Yeah. Eight feet deep is the To minimum. keep it warm enough? Yeah, to keep it from freezing. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Uh, Washington is 24 inches, so two feet deep. Uh, I think okay. California is 18 inches. And Louisiana, I think, is just right out the window, basically. Uh, Alabama was ground level. <laughs> was it? Yep. One inch deep. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. <that's, laughs> just bro, don't let your lawnmower hit it. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> dude, that's wild. So, yeah. and uh, yeah, because I remember they had like a neighbor when I was growing up uh, that they would just, they had like a shit line and just went off into the woods. And yeah. it would just, and then at a certain point, I remember we ran back there. And when you're kids, you don't know, you think it's like a little r- river, like a little lake or something. So gross. And so, yeah, people are jumping around, skipping rocks off of shit. Yeah. Like just, you know. <laughs> Making little boats. We used to make little school boats and like push them out into like this like kind of duty canal kind of just. Hey, I mean, you get, you're a kid. You sick now? Uh, I'm I'm not doing great, but I'm doing this year. Uh, I'm feeling okay. But generally speaking, throughout your whole life, are you a healthy dude? Yeah, me too. You know why? Why? Because you played with shit. Yeah, <laughs> and you true. got dirty every once in a while. And you didn't give a oh. crap about washing your hands every single time you went to the bathroom. Oh yeah, out here, like everybody, the, I saw some woman get a bunch of hand sanitizer and wash her son's neck with it the other day. And uh, when I was at the bank, I'm that like, can't be good for him. What the fuck, <laughs> that kid's gonna fucking get hit by lightning. Uh, yeah, that, that kid's definitely that dude. can't be good for you. Yeah, just letting that alcohol soak into your skin like that. Yeah, and just like. At a certain point, everything has diminished. Dim, what is it called? Diminishing returns. Diminishing returns. Yeah. It's, everything does. It's like, okay, you want to get so clean and everything, then fine. You know, uh, uh, something small comes along, a breeze with a little bit of cigarette smoke in it. Yeah. And now your kid can't fucking see for two years, hey, you know? Carlin said some stuff years ago about, you know, you, you spend so much time washing this and scrubbing that and making sure you're so clean that... When something real does come along, your immune system is not going to be prepared for it. Yeah. And you're going to die. Yeah, your immune system's at like a four-star restaurant or something. Dude. Yeah. You, and then you some need little hitchhiker comes in, you can't fucking handle them. <laughs> right. You, you know? got to build it up. You got to yeah. do something to kind of 
strengthen your immune system somehow. So yeah. and go play with some turds every once in a while. <laughs> Amen, bro. Look, I'd watch people do it. <laughs> you, you ain't going to do it yourself, though. M- Mario made you do it. Uh Oh, yeah, dude. When I was young, they had a kid in my neighborhood who used to make me bury his uh, duty in, uh, in his yard for him. Or I couldn't play with him. And he was a tough kid. He, like man. beat the crap out of you? Uh, no, he would shit in his yard and I had to bury it, <laughs> you know, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I did it, man. I just did it, man. <laughs> I fucking did it, dude. His mother was a librarian. I thought she was a nice lady and he died. Actually, he drove a bass boat into an embankment in the middle of the night. Damn. If we can look that up, Mario Rafino and RIP as well, man. RIP. Um, What's some? I want to know some good tales, man. We got we have some great video questions that came in for you that we'll get to in a minute. Uh, yeah, I want to know, I want to know a tale from the <laughs> found it. You funked it right there. There he is, right there. Six day search, man. Damn, Chifuncta. Hey, what Chif- city is it? What town is this in? That's uh, Covington, Louisiana. And Chifuncta, oh, right. how it got its name? It's a famous Indian river. Uh, a big Indian threw a big rock in there. And that's a sound it made when it went in. <laughs> that sounds about right. It is. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? By the overpass, man, I knew a fucking kid who jumped off that overpass one time and fucking hit a boat when he fucking went in, dude. Is that where you're originally from? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, then you know the sound. We all prayed, and we just knew God was going to let his body surface so we could take him out and give him a proper burial and We're- and get proper closure. Man, Mario Rufino traveling upstream at high speed just after midnight. That'll do it. Man, what's he doing driving a boat in the dark? Smashed into the overpass. Mm. Had he been drinking? I bet he had. It says Rufino was last seen at a bar right there. Mm. May have had a beer or two. That's what Mm. they put in there. But man, I'll tell you, that boy lived at top speed from the moment I ever fucking met him, bro. It It was like the whole world was at... I mean, he was just at high speed, that kid. You know, if you were to ask him right now, he probably ain't got no complaints then. Oh, man, he, that guy, yeah, it, I, 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 yeah, he didn't, I mean, I guess I was, he didn't believe in plumbing. I fucking remember that. That's what I'm <laughs> sure. Just piss outside. <laughs> you know, oh, for, dude, I got this fucking, yeah. Oh, I was, we're going to save a lot of money. Mom and dad, I'm going to have some kid bury our poop. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <believe> in <laughs> what's some wild stories that happen out there man oh man wild like or tell me something uh, gross crazy you know i got them all chicks trying to have sex to pay off their bill is that true oh yeah that happens i, n- yeah. I never did because you're a handsome guy i'm sure you go in there and there's the opportunity for sex every now and then it, it's happened uh i you know i had a lady in seattle she was she's good looking she mm-hmm. you know she it took forever for her to come to the door i still remember it because she was trying so hard you i mean Right. You can tell when somebody's coming on to you, right? Yeah. You know, I'm blind and all, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a dude. So <laughs> yeah. you, we miss most of those signs all the time. A right? lot of times you miss them. But so yeah. if you don't miss them, if a regular dude doesn't miss them, it right. must really be coming strong. That's what I realized. Dude, this chick answered the door in a very thin white t-shirt. Okay. And that's it. Wow. And that t-shirt was just long enough. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And then her stuff was upstairs. So I'll show you, you know, Shh. follow me. So I followed her up the stairs, staring at her ass the whole way up Mm. so I could plunge her toilet in 30 seconds and fix it. And then she has me sit there for like 20 minutes, I bet, Mm -hmm. while she sings karaoke to me on her little private karaoke machine. No way. (laughs) Still in this little t-shirt. Oh, yeah. With great big titties Damn, that you boy. can see every bit of there oh. she didn't even need to be wearing the t-shirt both of the tits you could see them oh yeah, yeah. i oh, mean yeah. It, the, the 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 shirt is so thin you can see right through it. oh yeah. so but the point was i knocked on the door and i got there and i got no answer and i knocked again i knocked again it, it took her like five minutes to come to the door and were you getting scared what do you think she was doing I was thinking she wasn't there. I okay. heard her at first. When she first came up, I heard her come to the door. She mm-hmm. looked through the peephole. Mm-hmm. She saw I wasn't an old fat dude, probably, mm. you know, because you don't know what plumber's showing up to your house. That's true, huh? So, and then it was, I kept knocking. I'm like, so I called dispatch because at the time. It was, was this Roto? You were going to Roto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, this was before cell phones. So all we had was Nextel. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Yeah. You know, hey, can you call this? customer that i'm i'm here at her house and i've knocked i i hear that she's in there she ain't answering oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so they call him oh okay she's coming to the door i'm like cool thank you and she answers the door like that i'm like 
Mm. Now I know what the fuck she was doing. She Damn. went and got all ready and put her makeup on and whatever else. And was she wearing sunglasses or anything? Nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. She was slightly a little bit on the heavy set side, yeah. but you know, good looking. Yeah, um, and it's afternoon. Is it morning? It was morning, probably oh, yeah. 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Who you know? cares what anybody's body's like in the morning, you know? Right? Uh, South African white chick. So that'll kind of. She had an accent. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It, it, you know, but still, Ooh, yeah. you know, I'm on the job. Right, I, you're professional. Are you wearing a uniform? Oh, yeah, yeah. And at the time, I was single, and still, you don't shit where you eat, no matter what. No, you just, it's you only going to come. clean shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't fuck where you clean shit, because that's, yeah. <laughs> that's true, too. But I, I, I don't know. Something got instilled in me years ago. Don't ever have anything to do with anything with work like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, don't fuck your clients. It's going to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's still a bad thing, man. Once you yeah. put sex into any work equation, it all becomes uncomfortable. That's why me and Nick fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you guys don't get yeah. along? That's why we go to separate rooms and touch <laughs> ourselves. No, we've never done anything like that, man. And we never will, Nick. And that's why it's working so well. Yeah, that's why it's working so well, dude. <laughs> Look, I promise you, the second me and him have any sexual interaction, it's over. <laughs> it is over, bro. <laughs> it is over. And I think he would agree to that. Yeah, yeah. So I moved to Washington. No, so the lady, you're there, you're in the place. Oh, I, I, that was it. Oh, they, I, I hate, I, you know, it's such a, it could have been so. What I karaoke mean, music, though, it, that's it just, what I mean, what karaoke music. Was oh, she she's singing? singing like love songs and stuff and trying to like sell me her voice basically. And, and you and know. Why was she saying that she used to do music? She considered And music? she was totally into music and, and she wanted me to hear her sing. She was trying to get me to nail her on the couch right there. Wow. You and know? where was the uh, karaoke machine? this was after unstopping the toilet, I had gone back downstairs to write the invoice. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the couch. She's next to me on the couch. Oh, yeah. I got, I've given her the invoice. She's got the checkbook. Mm -hmm. And instead of writing me the check so I can go to my next job, mm -hmm. she spends all this time singing, trying to seduce, uh, seduce me, basically. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be cordial. I'm not trying... And what Look, song, lady, though? What song? I can't... Yeah, 20 years, man. This is literally 20 years ago, I bet. 15 years ago. I, I just can't remember. Was it rap music? No, no, no. I, I want to say it was like slow, like... Put your head on Yeah, so, something, you know, something softer than that, probably. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sexual healing. Marvin Gaye. I think you got it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It, she, she, was, she was pulling out all the stops to try. And, I, I had another lady in the same town days. grab my junk. Wow, and come really? in and grab me and kiss me. And I had to literally, I was married at that time. So I, you know, you said, me. hey, well, even if I wasn't right, get off me, pay me my money. Let me go. Right. Let me go. Mostly I'd be so scared. You know, we're in an age of lawsuits. Yeah. Now we definitely are, though. But 15 years ago, people I might think we still were. And what if it don't work out? Say this girl kisses me and I, I throw her on the floor and just ravage her and we have a great time. Yeah. And then I don't call her back. And now she calls my company and says, he oh, yeah. raped me on the floor and, or whatever. You right. know? Don't even go down that road. Don't oh, even yeah. cross There's that no, bridge. So. Yeah. I mean, in hindsight, do you ever fantasize about having, having had a romantic instance, though? About you know, like, I, Obviously, the, the South African one kind of stands out. If, mm -hmm. if I could have gone back now being single, I, you know, I probably could have taken a run at that and had a good time. Yeah. And all would have been fine. But good day, mate. Uh, yeah, I don't think they say that. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, actually, man. I think I need a fucking plumber in my head. Um, what, uh, what's one of the wildest? Yeah, we got to ask, yeah. like, how much shit is out there, really? How, and how much shit is, is, is the earth, middle of the earth just filling up with shit all the time? It, like I say, it all gets processed, cleaned, and then jumped back into the ocean. And, but the so, septic box, that thing. That, the septic box is even more environmentally friendly wow uh, uh better for everything it it contains it decomposes it leaches clean water out into your yard and that's why you see those green lines in a lot of people's grass because that's where the septic tank leach field is okay and it makes the grass a little bit greener in those areas oh interesting yeah but and does uh, it sift the sludge or just a sludge builds up because really man. in the end it's very little solids right right uh, a, a, a perfectly working septic tank, if it is working, it has active live bacteria in it that uh, are constantly breaking down the solid material, okay. separating the solids from liquids. Um, they sell this product called Ridex, but you can use buttermilk. You can use cultured uh, 
cultured buttermilk or cultured yeast, I mean. Uh, all these things work to promote the bacterial growth of your septic tank. Oh, interesting. Bleach and other chemicals tend to kill the active bacteria that are doing the job. So you don't want that. So you want those cultures. You want to create, yeah, you want to have like a little ecosystem yeah, going yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, live bacteria. They're doing the job. Wow. My grandma and grandpa were... I mean, they had people coming over to their house, but they lived in the same house for like 25 years. Mm -hmm. And when the guy came, because uh, the law says when you sell a house, it has to you have to have a septic tank pumped, no okay. matter what. Oh, wow. So, so that's when you start over. Yeah. So when the guy came to pump their septic tank after it had been buried for 25 years, he said, it looks like brand new. Wow. This didn't need to be done. This tank is working properly. Dang. And if they are working properly, it's a, a, beautiful a true tank. working septic tank will never have to be pumped. Dang. Huh, that's amazing, really. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a completely self-contained system if you do the right things. to, yeah. to You know, you can't just ignore it and let it build up. You've got to treat it. You've got to take care of it. You can't put the wrong things in it. Now, have you ever had to go looking for something that someone flushed that they needed back? Like a tooth or like a wedding ring? $20,000 diamond ring. Really? At midnight. Oh. Yeah. And were they on drugs or something? No, no, no. It was a lady at an apartment complex. She was the manager of an apartment complex. It was years ago. This was in Alabama. The boss calls me and says, hey, man, this, this lady, and we know this apartment. It's one of our clients. You mm -hmm. know, They got 1,500 apartments in there. We're going there all the time. Hey, she dropped her wedding ring down the toilet at, at the office. Can you go get it? So I get there, and she's just bawling, crying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, see you food. hug her, or what do you do? Just go, and you don't I'm, hug? No, I don't hug. Yeah, I'm a plumber, man. Nobody yeah, wants to touch me crazy. anyway. Yeah. And I got a rotor rooter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably got turds somewhere on me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, bro. <laughs> so I go in the bathroom awesome. and I, I take the toilet off the floor and I give it a shake mm -hmm. and I can hear it's in there. Oh, that's good news, man. Because if it makes it down the pipe, I got to send the camera down there and I got to basically really slowly with the camera until I find it. And then I got to chase something down like a snake with a hook on it to try and get it out. And how that's like an endoscopy almost. How much yeah. does that cost? How much is that upcharge with you get when you get that cam out? Um, it varies by area, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, in this area, I think a camera is around $500. Yeah, I could so, see that. So uh, back in the day, uh, this was, like I say, 15 years ago. I want to say we would probably charge her around $200 to do mm -hmm. that. Fortunately, I found it in the toilet, mm -hmm. so so I didn't have to go that route. I had the camera in the truck, but no need busting it out. Nice. So I go to shake it, and I'm like, it's in there. So you you shake the toilet. You can hear the pipe. You can hear it rattling. I can, I can hear the, the, right. the, the wow, ring rattling cool, around man. inside. So what I shake it. What a neat way to think about it instead it, of just looking. It, yeah. Listen first. It fell out. I got it. I put it on my finger. I mean pinky finger I put the toilet back together and I go back into the office because it's midnight she's still waiting for me I'm like I couldn't find it oh no she, no 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 I'm kidding here it is here it is yeah <laughs> did you get down on one knee no, no, no oh man here you go uh she gave me a hundred dollar tip oh that's nice yeah for a because it was an overtime like midnight thing mm -hmm. I think the bill was probably like 85 bucks Right. 15 years ago in Alabama. Yeah. Here, that same midnight charge would probably right, 400. be, yeah, four or 500. Wow. Yeah. From, from a commercial company. For me to come do it, I, I don't care about overtime or late night or whatever. It's all the same. Is there anything you notice about people, like just in different areas, going into different areas over time? Like, uh, do you notice any difference in like people in different environments or anything like that? Yeah, man. Yeah. California is tough. Yeah. It, it's, I hate using the word liberal because I don't really like that word, but <clears throat> well, it's very liberal out here. Yeah, it's it's very people out here are pussies. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to say it. There's a lot of <clears throat> labia out yeah. here, as I like to <laughs> yeah. say, dude. Yeah. That, that, a lot of the, freelance. Uh, the vaginization of yeah. California has taken it's place. Soft. Ugh. So soft, man. It's so, and that's what it makes it tough being here too. But then there's also a beautiful side to oh, it man. too because, yeah. you know, um, the weather is so nice. There's so many great people that come here sure. to chase their dreams, to do things yeah. like. Uh, there's there's so many types of people. Like it's tough, but yeah, it gets this shit gets you soft out. It's tough, but it's also the best. You yeah. know, it's it's the best. It's the best and the worst. You you got to take the bad with the good. Yeah. There's there's that soft side of a lot of people, but also there's 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 tons of good people. Yeah. And if you hook up and you meet with the right ones, then then you can kind of get set here. So yeah, you know. The holiday rush is upon us, 
And if you sell stuff online, then you better get ready. And you better get ready with ShipStation. With more people buying online than ever before in the history of time, you need to be able to get orders out quickly, efficiently, and affordably. But how do you keep track of all of those orders and get them out in time? Well, that is ShipStation. With just a few clicks, you'll be managing orders, printing labels, and getting those products out the door and delivered in time for the holidays. That's right. You can still get them delivered in time for the holidays. No matter where you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface. Quit going to this and then going to PayPal and printing off the address. That takes forever. ShipStation will handle it. With all of the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, and UPS, ShipStation lets you compare and choose the best shipping solution for you and your customer. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice for online sellers. And you can use our offer code, Theo, to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months of free, no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Just visit ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Theo. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code Theo. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Oh, sorry. Just shaving my junk. Trying to get that little Christmas tree above my ween because it's holiday time. That's right. I'm trying to shave a little bit of a plant right up above my janson. You know, a little bit of a gristle toe. That's Manscaped is what I'm using, guys. I'm manscaping. And support for this past weekend comes from Manscaped. The number one company in men's below-the-belt grooming. You can jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. Something you might find in a horse and buggy or a mercantile. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I'm talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Everyone has accidentally nicked their balls or something like that. But you don't want Santa to cut a hole in his sack, do you? Neither do you. That's why the revolutionary company Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin-safe technology. So this trimmer won't nick your bag or snag your nuts. It's also waterproof. You can use it in the shower. The perfect package also comes with a Manscaped Boxer Briefs Pair that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. Tighten your junk up and put it in that fresh sack. Tis the season to get the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0 for yourself, your dad, or your brother. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. That's right, get 20% off and free shipping with the code T-H-E-O at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping. And use code Theo. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. When I was young, uh, the plumbers came because my mom had been flushing coffee grounds on the garbage disposal yeah. and the and the little paper thing that was in the coffee pot. Oh no! She'd been like putting that in there just in the morning because it was easy. She was on the go. Yeah. And she was like, "Do not tell the plumbers that yeah. I've been doing that or the." <laughs> We're going to have to pay, and the building won't have to pay. Right. And right when the plumbers came in, bro, it was like, I was such a rat, dude. <laughs> I was like, my mom, has been sh- my mom has been flushing coffee grounds and the paper things. They would have found the it. Anyway. Disposal. They would have found it anyway. <laughs> Fuck, man. I, I never even told anybody that till just now, man. But I feel so bad if I can throw my mom right under the bus, bro. <laughs> Did she have to pay? I don't think she did, man. I think the plumbers knew that, like, she was a single mom and stuff, and were like, ah, oh, well, you know. I've done that before, actually, where, you know, so uh, you go to an apartment complex or you go to a, a rental, you know, a lot of rentals I'd go to, where the owner would say, hey, if the customer put something in there that they weren't supposed to, 
I ain't paying. Right. Like tampons or, you know, paper towels is a big one. We get a lot of paper towels out of drains. Baby wipes. Oh, uh, yeah. Baby wipes seem impossible to flush. They man. don't break down. Yeah. So if they get down there and they get caught on something, they're just going to pack up and other stuff's going to pack up on them. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a couple of good tips. You know, for years they would say coffee grounds is okay in the garbage disposal. Eggshells is supposed to be good for it. No. Don't ever put pasta. Don't ever put rice. Don't do eggshells. Don't do coffee grounds. Those are not good for your garbage disposal. They go in the trash or in the compost. Mm -hmm. uh, your garbage disposal is for the tiniest little bits or, or what, whatever's left on your plate is what your garbage disposal was originally designed to do. Mm -hmm. Chunk that stuff up, mix it with some water and send it down. What about fat? Like if you're cutting the fat off of a chicken, like you're getting some pe chicken pieces. I mean, if you got one or two, get it in there, but don't, okay. don't take the, don't, don't carve a whole chicken and throw all the extra stuff in your garbage disposal. That's not going to be good for it. You're okay. going to call a plumber. What about bones? No. Okay. No bones. No. One lady, <laughs> one lady called me because she stopped up her garbage disposal with a whole steak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she called. Almost her. cute. Her son was going to come over for dinner. He called. He said he couldn't make it. She got pissed off and she threw the steak down the garbage disposal oh. and it didn't make it. <laughs> oh, and she hadn't cooked it. No, it was raw. So yeah, that's yeah. that uncooked meat won't go down really, huh? No. Well, no. I mean, it'll chunk up, but once it gets through there, it's just going to pack up, right? Because it's that weird consistency <clears throat> at that point. So uh, garbage disposals come in different um, power. You know, some of them are really strong. Yeah. I went to this frat house in Auburn, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Tons of frat dudes, and they needed a new garbage disposal. They're all the one in, in Taking a crap or whatever. War Eagle, man. Yeah, War Eagle. <laughs> War Damn Eagle. <laughs> yeah, my bad, dude. Yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I get him this one horsepower garbage disposal and I put it in, and this the, the head of the, the frat house is there, and he's like, is, is this a good garbage disposal? Is it strong? And I'm like, they actually advertise this garbage disposal will chew up a beer bottle. Damn. And he's like, word. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> and he's like, that's awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. Bye. Give me my money. And I left. Like a week later, I had to go back to that same fraternity house <laughs> because all the pipes underneath the garbage disposal and the whole main pipe underneath the house was packed full of broken glass. <laughs> That's amazing. Because <bro. laughs> they had a party that weekend and dudes were going, watch this yeah. and just dropping beer bottle after beer bottle down the sink. <laughs> Have you ever uh, have you ever seen a gas powered uh, garbage disposal? No, that'd be pretty cool though. It'd be pretty cool, huh? I think that thing would work. I wouldn't want to connect it to my to my sewer system though, because that's just going to send too much nastiness down there. You know. Now, if you run out of Drano and stuff, can you pour gasoline down no, your drain? Don't pour Drano down your drain. Really? No, man, that stuff's bad. Is it? <laughs> I guess honestly, dude, sometimes when I'm not even feeling good about myself as a person, I'll go get a couple things to drain out and pour it in all the drains in my place. Why? I, I think it just makes me feel like something's being done, even though I'm not feeling good. Do you, you own know? the house? No, it's an apartment. Then fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't your pipes. Yeah, but I just like, I don't know, something about it's like, oh man, I can't unclog my own life, but I'm going to do my best on these drains right now, you know? I think it's kind of a, anyway... Um, it, it's, uh, anything with hydrochloric or sulfuric acid pipes are not designed to handle that. Wow. It might eat through the clog, but whether it does or not, there's going to be some residual acid left in your pipes. Mm -hmm. I, I have grabbed pipes, solid cast iron pipes that people had used Drano on and I can crush them with my hand Oh, because they're so brittle or uh, plastic pipes that just have the whole bottom channel where the water runs. Oh yeah. Gone. Just melted away. Yeah, that's what we had growing up. It would be plastic piping right through some uh, plywood, like yeah. right boot through a hole in a piece of plywood or so. so. You, you think getting a drain is unstopped? Or you think getting a drain unstopped is expensive? Try replacing a pipe. Yeah, that's you when know? it gets pricey. Right. So you, you, you want to spend $20 on some Drano to try and save yourself 100 or $200 on, on a plumber for unstopping your drain? That Drano might cost you thousands in the pipe repair that, that comes down the road mm. or the damage that the water leak will cause because you're not going to notice it. Yeah. right away it's going to do some wood damage first and some mold and rot fuck that's crazy bro i can't yeah. even yeah because I, I i guess i'll stop getting it and sometimes i get the expensive one the little gold bottle nah, or whatever. Nah, nah. It, there's better tricks boiling water works really well really yeah boiling water with a little bit of vinegar in it mm -hmm. keeps your drain smelling good and it keeps them running clean dude what's crazy is in the morning when i get up 
I get some warm water and put some uh, vinegar in it. There you go. See, we have, I mean, you're already and drink right it there. for myself. Oh, oh, and drink it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, like a, it's like a popular thing. We looked that up. Do you mind, Nick? How's that work? It works good. I feel like it makes me feel. It makes me feel like kind of. I don't want to say fresh, bro, because that's kind of a bitch word to mm. use. But it makes me feel kind of like. So you're masculine from this side. Yeah, I'm masculine from the top, bro. All right. That's that fucking Manson gill. <laughs> What's coming up a lot is apple cider vinegar. Yeah, yeah, that's the one right. I use. All right. Yeah, sorry, not straight up like dye your hair vinegar. Oh, my girl was doing that for a little while. Yeah. I, you know, like uh, that and something else. She said it, ta- it didn't taste very good, but it, it was supposed to be pretty good for like It does not taste health. good. Yeah, yeah. It does not taste good. I just read on there, though, that it relieves nighttime leg cramps, mm-hmm. which is... Because it has a... Uh, that's a warm water. Pota- potassium. Oh, and honey. <sighs> Damn, I fucking want some right now, dude. Because <laughs> I got on these uh, compression socks because my legs hurt. Um, what is the most complicated septic system that exists out there? Or the, uh, the most complicated one that you've ever come upon? <sighs> hmm. They don't. They are not complicated. They're not. No, it's it's hard to find one like that. There are there are usually the the most complicated thing I run into is when people try and they don't know what they're doing. Mm. I, I, day before yesterday, for example, I went to a house where the guy called me and said, yeah, "This is going to be a big thing, but do what you can." And I go in there, and the plumber couldn't. He wasn't a plumber. The guy couldn't put the toilet uh pipe in the center of the space right where the toilet goes mm-hmm. so he didn't and he installed it over in the corner mm-hmm. and he put the toilet on a like a diagonal uh, coming out funny and it didn't sit right it didn't look right it was not proper not only that but he didn't use the right material so the toilet wasn't even stuck to the floor it was just kind of oh yeah been non-functional yeah and it feels risky yeah and as soon as i start moving things and i get in there i'm like had this not have taken place in the first place Mm -hmm. it would have been so much easier for me to fix but that i have to undo the problems of somebody else right and then recreate from you know basically i I gotta undo all this before i can go back to the beginning so when it gets complicated is when somebody tackles a project they probably shouldn't have. Yeah. They should have just called a plumber in the first place. Right. So yeah, instead if you get brave ideas to just kind of Lewis and Clark your fucking shit future, change it up Ugh. and hire somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah. It's worth the money. I mean, it's some of these companies, you know, I can't be everywhere so you're not going to get me. Mm-hmm. And some of these companies are not very cheap, but it is worth the money. These guys have learned a lot over their however many years it took to to be a professional plumber. You what's know, your what's your company, Brad? It's called Toilet Champion. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> Bro, it's crazy because in my mind I'm like, this guy is a toilet champion. <laughs> yeah. I won a contest. You did? Yeah, it was uh putting a toilet together. Uh it was a it was a a plumbing supply store in Washington was having this contest. They had a, a shitload, haha. Uh shitloads of toilets in the box. Like Everything is in the box that you need to put this toilet together. Oh, wow. And, and the contest, they had a barbecue and everything, and they had like vendors there that were selling tools and stuff like that. And this was the contest. Whoever puts the toilet together in the fastest amount of time, mm-hmm. you get a, like a trophy, you get a hundred bucks, and, and there was something else involved in it. And I did it in a minute 54. Damn. Out of the box, fully assembled, no leaks. So I get this little trophy with a dude holding a toilet up over his head, you know. <laughs> that's great. And I'm like, I'm the toilet champion. So <laughs> dude, that's awesome. It's been the name of my business ever since. Dude, that's beautiful. And toilet yeah. champion is based where? It's here in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah or a specific I, area of Los Angeles or I, I tend not to come into LA too much. I, I kind of stick more toward the valley mm-hmm. and uh, Thousand Oaks see me. But okay. I mean I mean I'll move around where, you know. Dude, I, I went to Cambria a couple of weeks ago and repiped a whole house. Damn. That's four hours away. Wow. So so you'll mm-hmm. do some adventures. You'll do some stuff. Sure. Um, let's uh, the toilet champion, bro. Toiletchampion.com, com, man. man. It's its own website. And stuff. I love it. <laughs> we got a question right here from a guy who has a beard. Now, There's, can you cut your hair and flush it down the pipe? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that's all right. Don't do it in like large quantities at once, but I mean little bits. It'll go through. It'll go through fine. Have you ever mm-hmm. found something in a pipe that you thought this person could be a murderer doing something dangerous? 
like some bonage or anything like that? I found a baby in a pipe once. Oh, you did? Yeah. A I baby what? A baby human. Oh, damn. Yeah. That was a pretty sad yeah. day. I had to call the police, though. You did? So, yeah. So Damn. she she uh, she miscarried. He beat the crap out of her. Oh. She, she miscarried, uh, flushed it. So it wasn't a very large. It was just barely bigger than the size of your hand or so. But um, it, uh, the, fortunately for her, their sewer line was already stopped up. Mm -hmm. So when she flushed it down, it didn't go all the way. Mm. And a couple of days later, they had called Roto Rooter, and when I got there and undid the the cap out in the front yard, mm -hmm. uh, the baby came out. Oh, and I'm looking. I, I had to look at it for a couple of minutes because I I've seen so many rats in pipes. Right. So yeah. a, a rat that has been drowned or is it will lose all its fur, mm -hmm. and it'll also be white and very small and have bones. So you got to kind of look it over. It, it it was not dissimilar from that, minus the tail and all that, but it was definitely a human baby. Wow. And I'm like, uh so and what do you do did you feel something like spiritually at that point at all or did yeah you... i felt horrible i didn't know what was really going on at the time i think i was like 21 or 22 you know i was very young so i uh i picked up the next tail and i called my boss hey lamar man a, a baby came floating out of this drain what do, what do i do you know, i'm way on the country out in the middle of nowhere you know and he goes you pack up your shit get in the truck and leave right now don't unstop that drain don't do nothing so i did i packed up my, i didn't even talk to the lady i just loaded up my stuff and drove away they called the police. The police showed up. They did their thing. The guy went to jail for beating the crap out of the lady. Oh. So at least that happened. So, right. Like, sad story and all that. But at but least yeah, if you don't get called, you don't go there. Of justice. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they don't find out. Right. And maybe he continues beating the crap out of her. So. You know, it's funny. It's almost like a little bit of a euphemism for life. It's like you think you can put everything into the hide, everything yeah. inside of yourself or in the, you know, in the drains, you, you know in our emotional drains or in the ground or wherever, but it all comes to the surface. Eventually, eventually it's all going to pop out. You, you can't hide it forever. Yeah. So. Man, yeah. RIP, man. It's so sad, dude. What kind of baby was it a boy or girl? Do you know? I, I couldn't tell. It was like I say, it was so small. small and it had been in there for a while. So it was already oh. starting to kind of, and it was fully developed and all that. So. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's sad, so. man. That drain baby. And it was Alabama. That was in Alabama. Yeah. Mm. I found an alarm clock in the toilet. I found an Elmo I in the toilet. I could understand that, dude. <laughs> you're late for work yep. or you're not late for work. That was exactly that it. The alarm clock went off. Dude threw it that way and it went right down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> this past weekend is brought to you by Skillshare. There's someone that you love that's struggling with inability. Or not inability, but hell, they don't have a skill. Well... We got a guy on here today that has a skill. He's a plumber. And look at how well he's doing. Skillshare is a supporter of this past weekend. It's an online learning community for creators. creators, With more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. You'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, career, and creativity. Take classes in social media, mobile photography, marketing, even illustration. Are you a freelancer? Well, you can be. Just get a skill. Try bookkeeping for freelancers. How to handle your finances. One of our most popular courses. One of their most popular. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for TPW listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right, Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes. That's everything. Just go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn. That's right, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now. Man, I just, I keep forgetting to send one of these to my friend who just had a new baby boy. I got to mail out a Ridge wallet to him so he can save money because he's going to need it taking care of that little one that's right the ridge wallet helps you carry what you need every day it'll streamline how you carry cash and cards in their flagship wallet instead of carrying that big lump of dunk in your back looking like you got bad plumbing in your pants now you can get that front pocket carry and also, this thing is made out of titanium specialty metals. 
We're talking military grade like carbon fiber. It's proven to be bulletproof, waterproof, and chainsaw proof. Though I never recommend you take a chainsaw to your money. The Ridge is so confident you'll enjoy their product, they've made it as simple as possible. And free shipping so you can get it fast. Free returns in case you don't like it. You don't like it, you don't keep it. And if you do like it, there's a lifetime guarantee. There's over 30,000 five-star reviews, so they've got a lot to be confident about. See exactly how it works by going to ridge.com slash Theo. That's ridge.com slash T-H-E-O and use code Theo for 10% off. And Corey Huff, I promise I'll be sending you yours soon, brother. I'm so sorry. I know that, uh, that you've had that little baby for a while now. Um, the link is in, des- in the description. That's ridge.com slash Theo for that front pocket carry. Uh, let's go to this video question that came in right here. What up, pimps? Uh, I was wondering if it's true they call the day after Thanksgiving Brown Friday in the plumbing world. They really but do. You boy, no. Gang, gang. Gang, bro. They do? Busiest plumbing day of the year for service plumbers. <laughs> and it's- that's just based on sheer volume of feces? I mean, it's just called Brown Friday. It, it's it, to to be honest, it's mostly kitchen sinks. Ah, yeah, garbage all disposals, stuff. Uh, potato peels. Eighty percent of it's going to be potato peels in the garbage disposal. Mm. Uh, they, you know, you got a big Thanksgiving dinner. You just peeled twenty potatoes. They all went down the drain. They didn't go very far. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, potato peels they have they just have that same consistency. They it's like a little layer of other. skin they can yep. just gather up. Yep. So. Uh, they call it, yeah, he's right though, they do call it Brown Friday, man. I, uh, one year I did 14 service calls in one day, the day after Thanksgiving. And is it mostly shit related or is it like a mix of things? It's, you, you said a lot of it's food. My, like I say, I, out of those 14 service calls, I think 12 of them were kitchen sinks. So it's just food particles and everything. And the other two are main lines. And yeah. do you go to places where sometimes people are embarrassed? Like they'll, oh, they'll like come in, but they'll never even look you in the eyes. It's over oh, there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Well, not only that, yeah, people but, have a lot of shame around feces and around shit. I, I so it went beyond that because um, uh, several years after quitting with Rotor Rooter, I started working for one of the largest luxury hotels in the world. Wow. I don't know if I'm allowed to say who it is. Oh, you're certainly allowed. Oh, we have uh, Four Seasons, uh, uh, four seasons okay. in Seattle. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm working for Four Seasons in Seattle, and, and those toilets stop up just like any other toilet. Mm-hmm. But these people are fancy, and they don't want to interact with the common folk who is coming to unstop their toilet. Yeah, the plumber's a strange guy to yeah. them. Well, He's I actually work coming for in here. the Four Seasons. At, oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, I was for a, a maintenance specific man. specific one or for like kind of an area? Uh, eventually, I worked for three. Okay. But one at a time. I worked Four Seasons Seattle for three years as their uh, overnight maintenance. So it wasn't just plumbing I was doing. Wow. Drywall repair and painting and all this other, you know, whatever needed to be done, mm-hmm. including, you know, all the building maintenance and handling guest room calls. So, yeah, most of the time, if a guest were to call with a stopped up toilet, that guest would not be in the room. Wow. They'd just dip out, let you fix it. They don't want to, yeah. you know. You already got to smell their shit. They don't want to talk to you. Yeah. For the most part. There was some small occasions where they would be in there and they would just be in. It, it's in there. Right. Yeah, lady. I know where the bathroom is. I, I work here. Have you ever had anybody <laughs> like put on a mask or something so they don't see you? Like, no. people have so much shame surrounding like body, you know, activity and stuff. Uh, they do, but no. I, I, I had one lady. Anybody uh, hiding behind their hand or anything? Like anything that's. No. No, I, I had one lady open the door with the robe, and the robe was open. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, just everything was showing. Damn, nice looking or not? Yeah, real nice looking. Yeah. I ain't trying to lose my job. Right. Uh, I, I can't come in. I'm sorry. Wow. She's like, no, 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 it's okay. Come on in. And I'm like, no, I can't. Her husband pops around from the corner, and he's like, yeah, it's okay. Come on in. I'm like, no, it's not okay. Yeah, like surprise me with a man. That yeah. ain't going to help, No, dude. no, no. Y'all trying to invite me in here for some freaky stuff <laughs> I, I ain't down let me fix your toilet <laughs> have you ever had anybody offer you yeah just straight up point blank here's a couple hundred dollars watch me bone ronda or whatever you know like watch us do something man i might get down on that 
But no, I never but had you don't that. Have that. I, I mean, if I just got to stand there and watch, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no, it'll come, man. I'll yeah. tell you this, man. When you guys hire the toilet champion, <laughs> you throw in three hundred dollars, he'll watch you guys bone for a half hour. That's for damn sure. Look, man, I guarantee you, somebody will hire you now to come do it. Hey, hey, man, money is money. You gonna pay me three hundred dollars? Well, look, if, I ain't break. gotta do no hard work. I just gotta stand there and watch. Frank. It's still plumbing. You're watching, bro. That's right. Somebody's Watch. laying pipe. Get that half a sandwich, <laughs> dog. Here comes a white guy from, with a question. Ooh, from Seattle, from your old uh, stomping no, I'll be down. You got a nice hat on. And yeah. I, I will say before I play this one, uh, we got more questions for you than we have in a long time for nice. a guest. But like two thirds of them were, have you ever had sex on the job? Did anybody ask you to clean your pipes? A lot right. of that stuff, right. type stuff. It was, yeah. yeah. A lot of euphemisms. Oh, and yeah. We covered that pretty in depth. What's happening, Theo? Ryan from Ohio. Just wanted to ask Super Mario there if he, uh, when he's cleaning out toilets, um, cleaning a real nasty drain, does he glove up the hands or does he go in raw? I used to work with this cat in Pittsburgh. He's from Pittsburgh. Just thought I'd throw that in there. From Pittsburgh. He, uh, you know, we worked on the river together on the boats, and anytime he was cleaning a shower, cleaning the toilet, he never gloved up the hands. I always called him nasty. He said it was because he used to be a plumber, and, you know, all plumbers did that. I just wanted to know if Super Mario there did that. and He'll probably try to lie to you and say he didn't because you got him on the spot right now. So just don't shake his hand when he goes to leave. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, brother. Thank you. Ryan, was that Ryan from Ohio? Yep, Ryan Boyer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Boyer. I appreciate it. That's a good question. It is. Uh, yeah, uh, first four or five years. No gloves. Raw dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, That's my toilet champion. <laughs> and and still, if, if I don't have gloves, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, if I have them, I'll use them. But if not, I know how to wash my hands. Yeah. I'm not trying to stick my hands in my face or on my eyes or shake hands with people or anything. Yeah, you know? it's work. But here's the other thing. I went to cooking school for a year. So that was an everyday, four hours a day thing. And and the biggest thing that 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 they teach you in cooking schools to wash your hands mm -hmm. and, and such good cleanliness habits with your hands. Mm -hmm. So I can understand the difference. You know, you know what I'm saying? That it's okay to stick your hands in poop. If yeah. you know you're going to wash your hands before you shake somebody else's hand or, right. you know, stick it in your mouth or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I, no worries. I don't care. I'll yeah, put you, my hands you on got good, Yeah, you got good hand uh, etiquette. Yeah. You got hand plans. You, you yeah. have plans for your I'm hands. I'm not trying to touch food right after cleaning out somebody's toilet. Yeah. I'll probably wash my hands three or four times before I do that. Yeah. So. You ain't going to clean out a shitter and then fucking polish off a thing of deviled eggs immediately. Most likely not. Yeah. But back in the day, I did. Amen. In, in the first five years, yeah, I'd go unstop somebody's thing and then go eat lunch without yep. washing my hands. Hell yeah. So I, I didn't know any better. I was a kid, so... Yeah, and at that time, do you, when you're it's it's wild how when you're young, you can spare a couple of years. You're like, oh, I get lymphoma, I get yeah. you know, carcinogen or whatever. I'm be fine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I fucking lose a limb, I will sprout another. When you're young, you have <laughs> yeah, that in yeah. your head, that, uh, invincibility attitude. Yes. Yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, whatever, dude. I'll fucking have a, uh, you know, I'll have a couple spare ribs and fucking <laughs> half a turd for lunch, bro. I'm now I got to be careful when I get out of bed because it's a ways down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what do we have, Nick? Let's get to a video question. I'm not. We actually had a. Uh, that was a great question by that guy. Yeah, yeah. I I would have just assumed yes, they do wear gloves. So that's very interesting. We actually had a message from someone you might know. Uh, uh oh, it's a it's a voice memo, actually, not a video. So let's hear this. What's the biggest turd you've ever seen while plumbing? <laughs> that's my father is it really <laughs> yeah i know that guy's voice wow that's like <laughs> luke i am your father that was like very star warsy in it. We, well, i know again. i know his voice yeah one more time let's hear it what's the biggest turd you've ever seen while plumbing <laughs> oh that's awesome man I, I you know it has to be the one i was talking about earlier the lady with the baseball poops yeah there's cole and ryan that's what they call it <laughs> <laughs> it's great thank you bro that's great it just came into my oh, brain man. Man. i'm gonna have to get a hold of my friend in alabama and tell him that he'll laugh he'll remember buy him too. a houston jersey dude. That's what you gotta do call and ryan do this thigh young award winners that's what i'm talking about now i i mean yeah that was the biggest one wow plumbing mm -hmm. but i was walking down the streets of seattle like 
I don't know, 10 years ago, I was uh, plumbing a building actually. And we were just taking it because we were uh, commercial plumbers doing high rise buildings and uh, kind of got out of that turd chasing business. That's mm -hmm. what they call uh, rotor rooter men, turd chasers. Turd chasers. Yeah. yeah. So I got into the, the new construction, high rise, clean pipe, no, no more dirty hands. Right. And uh, we were walking downtown Seattle, headed to Whole Foods like we did every day to have our 10 o'clock morning, 15 minute break. And we passed. I kid you not, a one foot turd. Oh wow! It, I mean, in diameter, it was a pile of poop. Shit, squatch! Oh, a that's insane. Foot in diameter. Jesus. And where'd they get it from? You think you think it came directly out of a body? You think it was a group oh, of people? No, no, no. It was a human a turd. One human turd. Oh, wow. One and piece. it was just kind of like one of these kind yeah. of soft serve deal. Yeah. That's a thing, though. That's that's a homeless thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that or not. Mm -mm. Homeless in major cities shit on the sidewalks on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew that. It's like they're fuck you to society or whatever. Yeah. So it's not uncommon to see a big turd. And it's I almost think like they're kicking back like, hey, I got a three-day turd built up. Yeah. I got to go find a sidewalk, you know? Yeah. And then we'll kick back and watch all these people walk past it. Oh, I bet. Bro, it's got to be. <laughs> and honestly, you can't fucking find entertainment like Nah, that. come on, man. That's that's free entertainment. That's amazing. Imagine laying just a real snake in the basket oh, heater across the way. <laughs> yeah. And then you and your buddy crack open a couple of natty lights. And sit over in the corner the and watch. And fucking watch a fucking fireworks. I saw that in Hollywood like two months ago. Oh. Oh, and you. people had stepped in it, so there was like foot tracks going oh, yeah. away from it. It was crazy. God, that's insane. <laughs> you know, it's interesting too because at a certain point with bodily functions, we become almost like animals in a way. You know, it's like we mark our territory. Or oh we, yeah. Uh, dude, when I was young, I used to be real scared, and I would urinate in places in my bedroom. All right. You know, and I think in hindsight, I never really knew why I did it, but I think I was like scared that something was going to come get me, yeah. so I would mark my territory you know i don't think it was a choice that i was making i felt like it was a a not involuntary reaction but just something that was more in the animalistic dna of me you know did you ever outgrow that yes i did well i have not yet really wow you'll just do it sometimes i i get in trouble with with my girl and my fiance uh a lot for peeing in inappropriate areas wow yeah. That's interesting. Do you think that's any reason why you got into plumbing? No, no, uh, uh. But uh, I, I'm drinking. Sometimes comes, oh, yeah. comes into play with, with the with the peeing on the floor or whatever. Oh I, yeah, on an ironing board in a hotel room or something. Or yeah, uh, you, that's you, fun. you never know. Yeah, I mean, so you'll do some wild pissing, but also more to your point, like you're saying, kind of. Every time I move into a new place, mm -hmm. I got to pee on it. Yeah. In, in some, somewhere. Yeah. I, I'm going to pee on that <laughs> yeah, house somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know oh, why. Yeah. I just have to. <laughs> Dude, my buddy's dad, when I was growing up, used to get on the roof sometime when he'd been drinking and he'd let us watch him piss down the chimney. Dude. <laughs> down the chimney yeah. to come inside. And then mom, they wouldn't know. He'd sneak up and then the mom <laughs> would fucking get so mad. Oh, yeah. Bro. Yeah. They just get. Uh, they just can't understand why you can't go use the toilet. Yeah. Well, because I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I don't have to. Because I don't have to. Dude, you, you can pee. You're supposed to pee in the toilet, but you can also pee wherever you want. Exactly. Wherever you want. In a suitcase, on ironing board. What, yeah. what, what? <laughs> Do you feel like it's territorial for you? I think so. Yeah. 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 I hope. I, I don't know if I'll grow out of it. I I don't care if I do or not, really. It's yeah. It's not really a... The, the only bad vibe I get from it is... is from from the my misses. fiance, yeah, she's yeah. she's not comfortable with it. Well, look, dude, that's when you break out that trophy and say, "Hey, lady, I am the toilet champion." <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, dude. and the toilet champion's gonna do what the toilet champion is gonna do. I need to get a belt too, dude. You really do, man. I'm not joking, bro. I probably could give one of the kids when you go into the house and they're in there. Um. That's awesome that your dad called in because yeah. we didn't know that he was going to call in, right, Nick? Right. I just recognized the last name. Yeah, Laskowski <laughs> was on the lineup of just people that had called. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, did you and your father ever work together? Uh, no. He well, uh, yes and no. Uh, not not really. 
So I'd have to say no. I, I got a job working at the same company as him, but for a very brief period of time. We weren't doing the same thing. We weren't even working in the same area, but it was only a, an in-between until I could... Uh, uh, construction plumbers get laid off from time to time. Mm. You know, you hit a big job or whatever, or a high-rise building. When that building is over, a lot of those plumbers are going to go on unemployment. I see. Uh, it, it, that seems to be the way of it. And I don't like to sit still. Yeah. So my, my old man had a, a company he was working for, and they, they'll hire anybody. They don't care. It's, yeah. it's barely better than minimum wage, but, it, you know, it's money. Wow. So I went and worked for him for like a couple of months. But like I say, him and I never really he, – he, him and I do different things. He's, he's a painter. So. And you guys, yeah, it must be pretty close if he called in. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, since we've become adults, yeah, we're best friends. Or, yeah. or, you know, he's, he's my best guy friend, I think. Wow. You know, my, my fiance is probably my best real friend. And your dad is a pretty hard worker himself? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's 62, 63. Been working his whole life, so. You know, That's cool. Instilled some good values, I would say. Yeah, it sounds like it, man. How do you get from, so for the young plumbers out there and plumbers apprentices and, you know, young men that are like, well, what do I do? Do Is there a way up out through that business? How did you, you know, tell me how to get that those young men can get from starting working from a company with a rotor root or a commercial group, some outfit like that, how they can get to that next level of being now. Um, a toilet champion, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or self-sufficient or self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah. there's a lot of, there's pride in that. There's, sure. even though there's uh, other expenses that come in, you know, it's nice to be able to, uh, to have something that feels like yours, you know, to piss in your own fucking yard, yeah. you know? Hey, make no mistake. I got to work hard for it. And I'm always out there hustling still. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I've not hit easy street by any means. Oh, and there never really is. The more work you bring on or create or, or that you're a part of, the more work there is. Yeah. It's like, it's like it, growth, yeah. growth begets growth. And it's, yeah. it's a blessing and a curse. There's a law of diminishing returns. It's like you, it's never, it's great, but it's different. Yeah. So to answer that, I would say to start, and if you're in your own, I mean, pride, I, I, I want to say pride in your own abilities or your own work ethic, mm. you know, it, how hard I work and how I want it to look is what drives people paying me. Mm -hmm. They pay me because what I put in looks good and it works. Mm -hmm. I don't charge a fortune, but I'm not the cheapest out there either. Mm -hmm. I, I pick what works uh, price wise for me. And I try to be as completely open and fair with my customers as I possibly can be. And that seems to work well, whether you're doing plumbing or carpentry or, you know, yeah. tre treat people right, treat them honestly, don't rob them and you'll get customers for life. Yeah. I, I've got people that call me from five, six, some 10 years ago. Hey, you still in Seattle? I got some plumbing. I, nah, I'm sorry, man. You know, but they'll hold on to your number forever if you did them right. That's so true. Yeah. You save it in there. Yeah. Brad so, plumbing. If you're to ask how to succeed on your, by yourself, treat people right and don't rob them. And, yeah. and that'll, you'll, you'll be fine. What commercial plumbing companies are charging it, I understand the, the overhead and the expenses and the insurance and everything else and advertising and all that, but it's still, you know, the owner is making money for doing very little, right? You know, it feels egregious. It's a little, it's a little too far. So at some point you got out though, you started to do your own thing. What'd yeah. you do? Just, you started an LLC. You started to do, I have an LLC. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you started advertising. How did you go about that? I'm just trying to get some of these young guys who may be curious about that sort of stuff, how to get out of somebody else's toilet. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And get into their own, or, yeah, or hoist dude. up their own. And fucking yeah. At least pretend yours is a bird bath for a little while. <laughs> yeah. A Craigslist was a good way to start. That's how I got my start. Uh, there's a couple other avenues like, like Angie's List, and there's a couple other oh, yeah. apps that you can use that will send you work, mm -hmm. but you have to pay for it. So uh, uh, Thumbtack, Angie's List, um, there's a couple of others that will give you job leads. But if you were to accept those job leads, they can be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And all they are is leads. Right. So if the customer decides not to go with your price, then you're out that money. You're still paying for that lead. Yeah. And, and they... And, that bill started getting so expensive mm -hmm. that it wasn't worth it for the return I was getting out of the jobs that would hire me. I see. So it ended up being, um, you know, some a guy needs a new water heater, for example. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I can put in a water heater mm -hmm. way cheaper than they can put in a water heater. Mm -hmm. But it cost me $100 just to tell that guy that. And what if I tell him 
and he decides to go with somebody else, uh, I'm still out that hundred dollars. Yeah. So I gave up on all those. They are an option. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're small time, really small time, and you're only doing the minimum bids, then it's probably not going to be too expensive. But if you're out there and you're trying to make it a business, uh, Craigslist works pretty well because mm -hmm. it's $5 per post, and that's not very expensive. And you do you get one job, and you got your return on that. Yep. Uh, and word of mouth, I think, is probably my best. Amen. And that seems to work better than anything. And I've been here a few years, so I have enough built up now that I rarely do, but I do post every once in a while on Craigslist. Matter of fact, that's how uh, Johnny found me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and Gianni, everybody knows, is uh, is the beautiful little twink. And I don't, I'm not sure he's a twink, but he is a nice young man who's on a new, he's an actor, and he's, he's going to be on a new television show called, what is it? He was, just in, he was just in uh, the sixth season of Power. Power. Yeah. He was just in the sixth season of Power, but he has a new show that he's taping right now that we can't talk about. Yeah. yeah. But we just did. So. <laughs> yeah. so we don't know what it is yet. Yeah, but also we have insurance. <laughs> so it's nice, man. Come at us, G. Bro, yeah. Come I'm at us. I'm using this insurance. <laughs> hey, if I'm paying for it. <laughs> have you ever seen kids? Like, I knew we'd go over to these kids' house, and sometimes they would flush the toilet, obviously, and then use it as like a little bit of like a pool or something oh, for one yeah. of their kids. Oh, yeah. You see that a lot? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Kids, kids. Oh man, kids will swim in whatever. Yeah, yeah, in the toilet. <laughs> or we had this one kid, small Allen, and he could fucking literally, bro, go all the way under the water and hold his breath, man, <laughs> in the toilet. Yeah, that's gross. It was beautiful. I thought at uh, the time, but yeah, now in hindsight, as an adult, <laughs> if I saw him in there, I'd be like, get the fuck out of there, Allen. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, uh, overflowed upstairs tub on purpose. Yeah, the tub was that big toilet. That's that's a, a big one to see happen a lot. Or bobbing for apples. People ever do anything like that? Have you ever seen any crazy somebody? A lot of tits. You have to pee? Oh, go pee. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, dude. Don't pee in here. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> we just, I got to mark my territory somewhere. Oh, oh, <laughs> just mark it in the bathroom <laughs> across the hall. The, there's a key right on there. Nick will get it for you. I Today's we... episode is brought to you by Toilet Champion. <laughs> Get that shitter, baby. You feel me? <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. We got a couple more questions for you that have come in here from listeners, man. And then we're going to uh, we're gonna get you on your way, man. Right. This guy is just trying not to get a bid. It's a very specific question for him. but Hey, Theo, man. This is JD. I'm out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. And... Uh, I see you on you getting on with the plumber, so I got a plumbing question for you. Mm -hmm. I turn my bathroom sink on, it just can't keep up. The drain it gets full, and I can't leave it running, you know. Ah. So I, I'd like to ask the plumber what what should I do about that? Uh, gang, gang. Gang, bro. Thank you, Bradley. Was that his name? It was JD. Sorry, JD Bradley. I'm Bradley. <laughs> right. But still not somewhere. I was trying to like, convince myself that. that. Uh, thanks, JD. That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. So, yeah, uh, he's in there in the morning. He gets it going. And then he's like, oh, shit, I'm trying to shave and stuff. Now I got to wait and let it go down. What's going on there, Brad? That's happened to every, like, college house I've ever been in. And, like, almost immediately. And then you just live with it. Yeah. Oh, man. Such a simple fix, too. Really? Yeah. I love this. I love this question, JD. <laughs> Five-minute fix. He's back in business. He can either grab that stopper and pull it straight out, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're connected to a, a rod that's behind the pipe. He has to reach behind there and undo that nut, pull the rod out, and then he can pull the stopper out. And there'll be so much gunk and hair and nastiness on the bottom side of that stopper. You throw that in the trash, put the stopper back in, slide the rod back in, and tighten that little nut that holds it in place. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. So what's going on there is the problem is he, if he pulls the stopper up, it won't come all the way up, right? That's yeah. the issue. Well, it's the pipe is like this, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a rod mm -hmm. into the pipe mm -hmm. and the stopper is connected to that, that rod. rod. That way you can't pull it out. Right. So and that little nut, you just, it, it's, it's finger tight usually. 90% okay. of the time it's finger tight. Wow. And you just undo it, pull that rod out to release that stopper and pull it out. Clean it all off. A lot of times... What I'll do is I'll clean it all off and put the rod back in without the stopper and then just drop the stopper in. Ah. So it's free floating. You can, you can use it as a stopper. It still works. But if you want to take it out, you can't. 
more manageable. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Um, thank you, JD. That's a great question. And I hope that that that, that that's a fix for you, uh, my friend. And I appreciate you uh calling in and leaving. That's a great one. Um, and also I was thinking about you know, the reason why you're here today, we thought about like, we just wanted to have like, just more norm, just people in the world, you know, like, it's just more fun sometimes to talk to somebody that, um, you know, not having to talk to like celebrities or try to get celebrities or just, sure. it's, it's fun to just, I, I don't know. Celebrity we're, life is a little different for sure. Yeah. And, um, we're just glad you're here today. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, thanks man. Thanks for having me. And what I want to say is, so you talked about putting an ad even on Craigslist every now and then, yeah. and that's how we found you. Yeah. Like our, our idea was just, we want to have somebody on, we want a plumber. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. We're trying to get an illegal alien to come on. Nice. So but we're like, we want a plumber. So we go on Craigslist to look. And because you put your ad out there, you are searching for business. You are doing your job sure then that's how we found you right nick yeah and we were just talking about like uh toilet champion at least website traffic maybe it's not local people who can <laughs> actually hire you but it's gonna blow up and uh, i bet you'll get some tpw fans in the valley hitting you up i'm hoping <laughs> dude i'll drive out there and shit and call you bro that's so cool man but uh just the way that you put yourself out there and, and work hard man and that um and that's how we're here today because you don't put that ad out. We don't even know about you. Right, right. And this has been a, an, an amazing, um, it's been an amazing time, dude. It was just, fun. Just learning about it. So uh, real quick, I got a, uh, I, I, I told Nick this, this story. You got to hear it, man. Okay. It's, it's, it is the funniest thing that has happened okay, to me in plenty. <laughs> Right, it, 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 it's worth it. I, I didn't want. I wanted no. to introduce it, but I didn't want to step on it. So I'm glad you said something. All right, awesome. So I moved. I transferred from Rotorooter, Alabama, to Rotorooter, Tacoma. Okay, and this is the toilet champion story. No, okay. The toilet. I told you that one. That okay. was just putting the toilet together and winning a trophy and a hundred bucks. Right. Okay. So, so I shouldn't have interrupted you. <laughs> uh, that uh, I moved. Like I said, transferred. Uh, I'm working for Rotorooter in Tacoma, mm -hmm. and we get a new dispatcher. Mm -hmm. and the new dispatcher that gets hired is going to come on on ride along with somebody excellent so she can kind of learn or he can kind of learn what we do uh in the field you know experience yeah, yeah. so this girl nikki she comes with me mm -hmm. and uh we go you know she sounds cute is she cute yeah, she was cute enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was yeah, cute enough. Yeah, Great big old boobs on her. Oh, oh, both of them, bro. <laughs> yeah, they were both big. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that. You don't always get that, dude. Yeah, it won. <laughs> yeah sometimes you get that fucking, you know, that lazy suit. You know? So anyway, she's. Uh, we go on, you know, two, three, four service calls or whatever it was. Go eat lunch. So I, I have... Um, kind of a rare form of colitis mm -hmm. and my stomach can just blow up at any time. What? Are you and, serious? Yeah, it sucks. It's it's weird too. The irony. I'm a plumber, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, totally you, you would think. <laughs> but in all the years, even with bad guts and all that stuff, I've never used a customer's toilet because mm -hmm. that to me is just bad etiquette. You know, yeah. I'm here to fix it. I'm not here to use it. Yeah. But this instance, I had to use it, but I couldn't because everything in the house was completely stopped up. Their toilets were full of water. Their tubs were full of water. Mm. Everything, they needed their main sewer line unstopped. And I cannot hold this anymore. You got that boy on, huh? I, I got a shit something fierce. <laughs> I know when I really have to, and my eyebrows will start shaking, that's when I can't take it anymore. I start sweating. Oh, yeah. Because it, it's, it's about it's to happen. It's going to out of your body. Yes. Yeah. So what can I do? I jumped into the back of my rotor rooter van. I grabbed a bucket and I shat very explosively and very loud with her sitting in the passenger seat. No way. Nikki with them tits? <laughs> Smelling and hearing every bit of what was going on. Did you tell her first? I said, I'm really sorry. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what. She's like, just do it. <laughs> and she's got the windows rolled down. You could tell she's not happy about it, but yeah. she she suffered through it. She said, the, the worst part was yeah. the people still had the plumbing problem. Oh. So after I finished blowing up that bucket, mm -hmm. I had to leave it there oh. and go fix these people's plumbing for another 30 minutes, leaving her with the bucket of shit. In the car? She got out for most of it and just kind of yeah. hung out outside. Oh, you got to get out and get on your phone or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> shit in the car. So... <laughs> I finish, I get the drain unstopped and everything else. I get back there, I rinse, rinse out the bucket and clean it all out and everything. And we drive all the way back to the Rotorooter office <laughs> in silence. Yeah. Just not speaking to each other. Oh, but so much chatter going on in y'all's heads, man. 
We ended up living together for three years. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, she was my girlfriend for a long time. Praise after that. <laughs> God, brother. That uh, is fucking like miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Man. Obviously, she didn't mind the smell of my shit that bad. <laughs> Wow, guys. So you want to talk about how to meet a lady. <laughs> Man, that's crazy how the vulnerability of something oh, brings people together. It, right? It really does, I, I man. I mean, could I have been more vulnerable in that situation? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm almost in tears. Like, I'm so sorry I have to do this. Oh. But, you know. And what did you tell her to look the other way? Was there any rules you gave her? Well, you know, I would... in, a, in a service van, you got that bulkhead wall right behind the oh, right behind yeah. the seats. Right. So, I mean, it's a steel wall, but there's holes through it. Yeah. So, I mean, she's facing forward. She can't oh. see. But she can hear everything that's going on. Sound like <laughs> gunshots. I, I, she could probably taste. <laughs> she could probably <laughs> damn near taste everything oh. that's going on. <laughs> man, bro, you're crazy, man. <laughs> Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know? Dude, you got to do what you got to do. You're crazy, man, but you're the best, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. You've been a plumber for how long, Brad? Uh, I started when I was 20. I'm 43. So. Are you really? Yeah. You look like Daniel, too, from our cartoons, doesn't he, a little bit? Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. You look like this kid I grew up with named Daniel, dude, who ironically used to drink off the hose. He would, he would put the hose in his mouth, bro. He'd put the hose in his mouth, and then have you turn it on, even if it had been sitting there all winter and oh, take no, that first no, hose no, hit, no. bro. That fucking hot hit, bro. I don't, I don't mind the taste of hose water. It's yeah. all right, but not the hot hose water. He nah. would get that fucking hot hit. He would go sometime and lay the whole hose in the yard, bro, on the hottest day and let that bitch heat up for a couple days sometimes, dude. Let spiders near, get in there. That'll boil you. Dude, he'll put it fucking right to the dome, bro. Why? And just taste the Lord, bro. That dude was, he was about the spirit, man. You know, he just, I don't know, but unbelievable dude that you have bad plumbing in your body and you deal with bad plumbing in the world right and then i became a cook so i could like deal with it coming in and coming out <laughs> you know? full service yeah. man yeah. brad lakoski the toilet champion of uh of the valley and maybe of the whole world dude i think of is the, the world. trophy worldwide i think so why not, Nick? I've never had anybody try to take it away. Hey, man, boy. <laughs> Come take it off him. Come, Come take, take it. it off him. Come get this. I dare you. Yeah, we will see you. <laughs> I got insurance. <laughs> we will see you in these shit streets, man. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here today, man. I'm so happy your dad got to be a part of it. And um, and just an inspiration, man. Working hard and just doing what you do, dude. Um, and we're going to pay you. What, I don't know what the time is, but we're going to pay you $500 for being here today with oh, us. Oh, shit. And, That's um, awesome. Yeah. No, we, we appreciate it, man. A Thanks, lot of man. our listeners are uh, hardworking people, and um, and we're just happy to be associated with you. So thank you awesome. so much. Hey, you ever get any further questions? Shoot them my way. I'll answer whatever I got. Look, I'm going to save your number, bro. I certainly will. Toilet champion, thank you. Hey, thank you. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones but it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine